Hi, welcome to episode 3, and today, we're going to take a chill. This video is about Ektar 100, specifically this one role, and going through my entire film process from shooting to developing and scanning. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back. I'll be giving away two free prints this video, so stick around to the end to find out how to win. Today we'll be walking around a neighborhood in East Portland using the Hasselblad 500CM and one roll of Ektar 100. Portland is filled with quiet, quaint neighborhoods, many of which contain one of the holy trinities of film photography subjects, vintage cars. I think an under-discussed topic in photography is just walking around and exploring. When you're shooting in a neighborhood, it's usually devoid of landmarks or popular photo spots that you can fall back on. You kind of have to go look for your subjects and make the puzzle work. I think it's a great way to challenge yourself to see how you can be creative, especially in an area you're not familiar with. I'm usually looking for colors, reflections, cars, floral, natural elements, and of course, the second part of the Holy Trinity of film, basketball hoops. And on this walk, I came across this beautiful car and its owner, David. I asked if I could take some photos of his car, to which he agreed, and we started talking about the car's history, his work, and background. One conversation with David, and you'll immediately understand how passionate he is about this car and restoring cars. And as someone like myself who knows little about cars, I find it all fascinating. I really enjoy when people share their passions with me. It's inspiring, I get to learn something new, and in a world where it can feel especially superficial or isolating, I feel like I get to meet a part of their real self. It's genuine. Now that the role is finished, I'll go over my basic developing process. I use a Patterson tank, which I'll list below, and this model can develop two 35mm rolls, or one 120 roll at a time. My hope is to get a bigger tank in the future as I've been shooting more medium format these days, and being able to develop multiple rolls at a time would just save a lot of time. Now for me, the most difficult part of the developing process is loading the film onto the reel. It seems deceptively simple, but when you're doing it in the dark and there's a possible jam, you have to restart, your hands get clammy, you start to get frustrated, and you just spiral. My suggestion would be to practice in the open light with a throwaway roll or an old negative so you can get a feel for it before taking it to your dark room or changing bag. Which leads to my second suggestion. Do not use a changing bag. If you have a bathroom where you can slip some towels under the door to block out the light, I think you'll find it easier as your movements are not limited to a small bag. I actually just step into my bathtub and close the shower curtain and load my film that way into the reel and tank, and they've all come out just fine. The next step is to heat up the chemicals. Some people use sous vide machines, which I don't have, so I just use running water and a thermometer until I get to the required temperature, which in this case is 39 degrees Celsius. Regardless of what method you're using, you want to make sure that your chemicals are up to temp. The kit I've been using is Cinestil's 2 bath process, which I like because I find it to be relatively simple. Now in this video, I won't be covering every step of the developing process, as I feel like there's already a lot of great videos out there that cover that topic, to which I would suggest checking out Willem Verbeek's video on how to develop film at home, which is how I learned. Granted, we are using different kits, but the basic process of developing film is standard across most kits. My note to those who are nervous about home developing is that it's a lot easier than it appears. The timing for chemicals are relatively forgiving, so if you're off by a few seconds here and there, you'll be fine. And if you're planning to shoot film consistently, I think it's a good investment to make as you'll be saving money in the long run, and that money saved can go into more film. I get a lot of questions about how I scan and convert my negatives, so I'll be going through that process more in depth. 
The scanner I use is the Epson V600, which I got off of Facebook Marketplace for $100. The scanner comes with film holders, but I like to show my film borders, so I scan directly on the flatbed using tape to hold down the film. Now there are various programs that you can use for scanning, however I just use the program that came with the scanner. And after clicking preview, I select the images that I would like to have scanned, which I scan at a resolution of 6400 dpi. Now this is a bit of an overkill, especially if you're just only posting for Instagram or other social media. However, I like the option of making prints in the future, which is why I scan at such a high resolution. After importing the scans into Lightroom, I convert the negative using a program called Negative Lab Pro, which will require you to use the white balance tool and select the piece of the film border in order for it to have a proper conversion. From there, you should crop until only the image is left. For this example, I didn't do that, but it is recommended that you do so. After clicking Convert Negative, you have the ability to make adjustments from exposure to contrast to brightness, lab glow, lab fade, and even different film stocks to help match it a little better. Now this video is not sponsored by Negative Lab Pro, however I really do like their program and I use it for all my film scanning. As of recording this video, it costs $99 to purchase, however they do offer free trials to see if it's something that works for you and if you like it. I found that it saved me a lot of time, I was really happy with the image qualities, so it was worth my investment. And with that being said, I'll tell you what I spend most of my time editing, and that is removing dust from the negatives. Dust is the bane of my home scanning existence. It is impossible to completely remove it even if you use a brush or an air blower. And I spend a majority of my time just slowly removing it using the heel tool in Lightroom. Now the big debate is whether film photographers should edit their scans. And you'll find that people have very strong opinions about this issue. For me, I try to keep them minimal or with the goal of trying to best replicate what I actually saw. That being said, I think it's your art and you have the right to do whatever you want with it. Even if you took your film to a lab, different labs will process and scan it differently and you'll have different results. And I don't think you can call one correct and one wrong. So if you have a vision and you're making art that makes you happy, do it. And with that said, thank you for sticking around and watching this video. I've really been enjoying the creative process both in shooting film and making these videos and being able to connect with people through it. I'm in the process of making and selling prints in hopes of one day having my own little online print shop. And all of this is done by myself at home from printing, cutting paper, making test prints, and shipping. As of right now, I have prints of San Francisco's Twin Peaks during Blue Hour available. But for today, I'll be giving away one of two prints to two different people. One print is the Twin Peaks print, and the other is the yet to be released Sutra Bass print. And all you need to do to enter is to subscribe and comment with which print you want to have. I'll be announcing the winners once I come back from my trip from New York, which is leaving in about 10 hours actually. So if you'd like for me to make a video of shooting film through New York City, let me know in the comments. Until then, best wishes, be safe, and do good.